All right, today we're gonna take this first deep dive into what photosynthesis uh, looks like, what the process actually looks like. Photosynthesis is divided into two pieces, and the first piece that we're gonna talk about is the light reaction. It's really the first half of photosynthesis. And the light reaction takes place in the thylakoid membrane. Now remember what the thylakoids are. The thylakoids are those uh, pancake-looking like um, things that are inside of the chloroplast. And each thylakoid has a membrane in which the, in those membranes are embedded um, two specific things. You've got your pigments in there that are gonna absorb the sunlight and you've got your ATP synthase, which we're gonna talk about very shortly here. Okay, now I told you before, I love color coding things. And so the drawing that I'm about to put up here to try to explain this process to you is going to be all color coded. So if that's something that helps you, if you're gonna copy this diagram down, you might wanna do it with some with some color pencils so that you can kind of keep everything straight as to where it's all going. Okay, now because this is a membrane, um, I have a lot of my um, phospholipids already up here. Now you can see I kind of have some holes in there. Those are kind of pre-planned holes because I'm gonna stick some things in there. But I've got both a, a top membrane and a bottom, bottom part of the membrane. Because um, remember how these are designed that if you break them apart, they can reassemble easily. So for this particular thylakoid membrane, the bottom part down here is inside of the thylakoid and the top part is outside of the thylakoid where the stroma is, where that fluid is that, that fills, fills the chamber there. So that's where the stroma is. Now, as we learned with cell membranes, with these membranes as well, you're going to have um, different types of proteins that are embedded in them. Some of the proteins are going to go all the way through. So I'm gonna put one here that goes all the way through. I'm gonna put one here that looks more like a channel. Um, I'm gonna put another one here that goes all the way through. And I'm gonna put another one here that goes all the way through, okay? And then in addition to that, um, I'm gonna have some other kinds of things that are that are kind of scattered throughout here as well that are kind of within the membrane, but maybe they don't go um, particularly all the way through, okay? So, what happens here? Well, the sun is shining, so I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna put a nice bright sun. And the energy from the sun is going to do two different things. The first thing that it's going to do is it's going to shine on this particular protein which is called PS2. Now, what does that stand for? Well, PS stands for photosystem. And you can actually think of it like a big solar panel. It is the thing that's going to absorb the energy from the sun. So why did I call it two? Well, it's because of the order in which they discovered it. Um, they actually discovered photosystem uh, one, the other one that we're gonna talk about in a minute. And they discovered that one first before they discovered this one. So that's why they, they are apparently are named backwards, okay? So I've got photosystem two right here and the sun is shining on this and it is going to excite the electrons that are in here. And then these electrons are going to be jumping up to the next energy level to contain that extra energy that they have from the sun. Now we're gonna talk a whole lot more in chemistry about what that means when an electron gets excited, when it jumps up to an energy level, then when it falls back down. So we're not gonna get into that today, but basically what it means is that these electrons then are going to get excited and they're gonna jump up to a higher energy level. So they are carrying lots of energy. So I have an excited electron, I will use a, a green color for that. And so then what happens is I have what's called an electron transport chain. And so this electron um, jumps from one um, like protein piece to another one within here, within these different, and this is, we're gonna kind of, it's gonna go behind that channel so you can't really see it. It's gonna go over here. And so here I have, and the electrons are gonna keep traveling along here um, until, another spot right there until they get over here to photosystem two, okay? And then um, in photosystem two, it's going to get more energy from the sun shining on this one. 
and these electrons are going to get excited again because what happens here is that they kind of leak energy as they're jumping from all of these different places to the next so they get excited they leak a little bit of energy they leak a little bit of energy they leak a little bit of energy by the time they get to photosystem two they're not so excited anymore and so the sun shines on this photosystem again like another solar cell they get excited again and then they're going to come out here these electrons are and they're going to run into a molecule that's called NADP and it has a positive charge on it. Now, don't get all concerned about what that stands for, about what it means. What you need to understand about NADP plus is simply that this is an, a molecule that is able to hold lots of energy. It's sort of like ATP. Um, it is a, a way to carry highly energized electrons um, to hold on to that energy and to carry them to a different spot so that that energy can be used for something else. So um, I'm going to take the electrons that have started here, they've worked their way through, they've gotten here, they've gotten excited again, and so I'm going to add two electrons to that NADP+. Plus. And we're going to put a pause, hit the pause button right there, because we have to go backwards now for a second and look at a different part um, of this process so we can finish that one. Okay, so part of the sun's energy is shining on these photosystems, but part of it also is being used to shine on some water molecules. Okay, so we'll... Put an orange arrow here as well so that this is shining on the water molecules and the water molecules then are going to be broken down by the sun's energy and they're going to be broken down into oxygen which is what this is going to um the leaf is going to get rid of this oxygen through the stomata like i told you about not the stoma but this but the or the stroma but the stomata um, in the leaf so the oxygen is going to be released and we're also going to make um, whoops not two we're going to have four hydrogen ions because I actually broke down two water molecules I'm going to have four hydrogen ions and four electrons that are broken down okay now why did I bring in some more electrons well the electrons that were here um, they have now left and they've gone all the way over here. Well, in order for this process to keep happening, I've got to restore electrons to this photosystem one. So these electrons that are broken down from here actually move back over here into this photosystem to replenish this so that photosynthesis can keep happening. Okay. Now, the hydrogen from the water, I'm going to make that red. The hydrogen is out here in the stroma and this it's in high concentration out here. I need to pump it into the inside of the thylakoid. And so this is going to go through here. But like I said, this is going to be going against the gradient. So because it's high concentration here and low concentration here, it doesn't want to come this way. So I have to force it through there and the energy that, remember I told you these electrons here are giving off little pieces of energy every time they jump from one of these um, little places to another? Well, that energy that they are giving off is powering this, these hydrogen ions to come through and come down here so that I now have a high concentration of hydrogen ions inside the thylakoid in place of outside. And the concentration is here because I actively pumped them through. Okay. So now I have this high concentration of hydrogen ions. It's higher outside than it is inside. And so now they're going to actually go through what's called um, an ATP synthase. And that is what, oh, using the wrong color. That is what this piece down here is called, ATP synthase. Okay, so these, hydrogen ions, because they're now in high concentration, they want to flow through to a low concentration. 
So they're gonna go through here. They're going to flow through this channel. Again, it's high concentration to low concentration. So there's no energy required for this. But as they flow through, they cause this ATP synthase to rotate. You can almost think of it like a water wheel. You've ever seen a water wheel, you know that when the water goes over the top of it, it causes the water wheel to turn and that water wheel can then be used um, to generate energy to power a, a, a mill or anything else that you want it to power. Okay, so the hydrogen ions, because they are flowing through here, again, from high to low concentration, they cause this ATP synthase to rotate when the hydrogen ions get through to the other side, they are going to combine with this NADP plus, and one hydrogen ion is going to um, go with that, and that is now going to make NADPH. And again, all I did is I took this hydrogen ion and I added it here, and the electrons were there to kind of balance out the charge. So I have this NADPH, and again, that what that's doing is it's just carrying, it's a holder for a lot of energy. You can think of it as a charged battery. Now, as this ATP synthase is turning, it is taking some ADP that has been brought in from another location, and it's going to take an additional phosphate group, and it's gonna attach that phosphate group back and it's going to make ATP out of it. And you already know that ATP is also like a charged battery, okay? So what did I end up with at the end of this process? Well, I have, I, to kind of summarize here, I've taken my sunshine and it's powered both photosystem two and photosystem one. Whoops, I called that two, that one should have been one. Sorry about that, photosystem one. It has powered both of these photosystems to energize electrons. So part of the, the sun's energy goes here, part of the sun's energy goes to break your water down. When the water is broken down, you have oxygen gas, you have electrons to replenish the electrons that move out of here. These electrons have been excited, they move through, they power the hydrogen ions to come through this channel because um, you have to force them through because they're going against the gradient. The electrons get here, they get boosted in energy again by the sunshine, and the electrons go out here and combine with um, the NADP+. The hydrogen ions flow through here as well. The energy um, that they use by their flow causes the ATP synthase to rotate. The rotation causes the ADP and the P to be able to come together and form ATP. And so now at the end of my process, um, I have formed NADPH, which is a high energy molecule. I have formed ATP, which is a high energy molecule. And I have formed O2, which is one of the products of photosynthesis. So these are the three big things that have come through here. What are the reactants that went in? Well, you've got your sunshine that went in and you have your water that came in from the outside. And so the, the water that is in the photosynthesis equation on the left-hand side and the light energy, those are, the, are where they show up here. This is one of the products of the photosynthesis reaction. And these things are actually kind of like intermediate, intermediaries. And we're gonna take these high, um, high energy molecules and we're going to take them and we're going to save them, kind of stockpile them all up and we're going to use those for the Calvin cycle, which we're going to talk about tomorrow.